Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subs and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. And if you would like to take a couple of extra steps to help support the channel a little bit more, there's a merch store and a Patreon for this channel in the links below. Thank you all so much for all your support. Now, before we begin today's video, just a quick heads up. I have been recovering from a bug that I caught a few days ago. So if my voice sounds a little rough well you now know the reason why i'm starting to feel better i'm not 100 percent yet but i felt well enough to try to make a little video so anyway if my voice sounds rough you now know the reason why but anyway on to today's topic for today's video we are going to be continuing the story of the rms carpathia and the role that it played on rescuing the survivors from the rms titanic disaster when we last left the Carpathia, the ship was just now getting ready to change course and head towards the Titanic, having just received word that the Titanic was sinking. All right, everybody. Well, hey, without any further ado, let's continue the story of the RMS Carpathia. It is Monday, April 15th, 1912, 12.58 a.m. It has been nearly one hour and 20 minutes since the RMS Titanic struck an iceberg in the middle of the North Atlantic and slowly began to sink. By this time, many ships in the area had already heard the Titanic's distress call and are heading towards the Titanic with all possible speed. Now at this point in time, the ship that has the best chance at reaching the Titanic is the RMS Carpathia. However, at being more than 58 miles away from the Titanic, it would take the Carpathia four hours to reach the site at which the Titanic is currently sinking. And by the time the Carpathia arrives, it would be far too late for the Carpathia to reach the Titanic before the ship goes down. This map does a great job in showcasing the Titanic's position on the night of the sinking, and it also shows the ice field that the Titanic steamed into where it hit the iceberg, and it also shows the position of other ships in relation to the Titanic on the night of the sinking. Now, as you can plainly see from this map, the Carpathia is not the closest ship to the Titanic on the night that the ship went down. The Mount Temple is closer, at being only 50 miles from the Titanic, and the Californian is even closer still, being somewhere between 10 to 20 miles from the Titanic. The Californian's exact position isn't really known, but we do know it was within 10 to 20 miles from the Titanic. However, the Mount Temple wouldn't be able to help the Titanic even though it was in communication with it, because as the Mount Temple steamed towards the Titanic, it encountered the same ice field that the Titanic struck the iceberg in, and the Mount Temple had to stop. And the Californian's radio was turned off, so nobody on the Californian knew that the Titanic was in trouble. So that means that the only ship at this current time that can come to the Titanic's aid is the RMS Carpathia but as stated earlier, it would not reach the Titanic in time. Now, once Captain Rostron, the captain of the Carpathia, got the Carpathia's course laid in and got the ship heading towards the Titanic, he began taking steps to prepare the Carpathia to take on the Titanic survivors. Now, when I say he began to prep the ship to take on the Titanic survivors, what I mean was he was getting extra bedding prepared, he was getting extra food prepared, you know, he was just, he was trying to make the Carpathia as comfortable as possible for the Titanic survivors when they came aboard. Now, once this process was underway, he then ordered to have extra firemen sent to the Carpathia's boiler room so they could begin shuffling more coal into the Carpathia's boiler, thus increasing the Carpathia's steam load, and then he was going to channel that steam into the Carpathia's engines so he could hopefully increase the Carpathia's speed. Now, to further help this effort, he shut off the Carpathia's hot water system and the Carpathia's heating system. He wanted all steam that was being generated by the Carpathia's boilers to go to the Carpathia's engines, nowhere else. Now, by doing this, he was able to increase the Carpathia's speed a bit, but he did something that I would consider to be very dangerous after all this. You see, Captain Rostron actually overpressurized the Carpathia's boilers in order to increase the Carpathia's speed even further. Now, in case you don't know this, overpressurizing a boiler is a very, very dangerous thing to do because if you overpressurize a boiler, it could potentially explode. But luckily, in this instance, it didn't explode and the Carpathia was able to handle this overpressurized load in the boilers this time. But as I said, it's a risky thing to do. Now, under normal circumstances, the Carpathia has a maximum speed of 14.5 knots. However, thanks to these extra efforts taken by Captain Rostron, he was able to increase the Carpathia's speed up to 17.5 knots. Theoretically, it was somewhere between 17 and 17.5. 
Now, the Carpathia was by no means designed to go this fast, and by some accounts, he damaged the Carpathia's engines by pushing them this fast. Now, because of all this, he was able to reach the site at which the Titanic went down a little bit sooner than expected. However, we're jumping ahead a bit. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But for now, you now know how the Carpathia was proceeding towards the Titanic and what incredible risk Captain Rostron took in order to get his ship to the site at which the Titanic was sinking as quickly as possible. However, what Captain Rostron and the Carpathia's wireless operator Harold Cottom don't know is that while they are currently steaming towards the Titanic's general location, they are in fact not steaming directly towards the Titanic. You see, due to a navigational error made by the Titanic's fourth officer, whose name was Boxhall, he accidentally placed the Titanic about 13 miles further west than where the Titanic actually was. And this was the coordinates he gave to the Titanic's wireless operators to put into the Titanic's distress call. So that means as the Carpathia is steaming towards the Titanic, they are in fact approaching the Titanic's position 13 miles further east than where they should actually be steaming. Now, one thing I need you all to understand is I'm not trying to make Box Hall look bad here or anything. I mean, sure, it is true that he got the Titanic's position slightly off when he was figuring out the ship's position on the ocean. But what you have to understand is, in 1912, trying to figure out a ship's exact position was a very complicated thing to do. And given how much stuff was going on on board the Titanic at the time that he was trying to figure out where the ship was, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm surprised he got the answer within 13 miles of where the Titanic was. I mean, it's a very complex thing to do. And given how stressed he was and everything, I think he did quite well given the circumstances. So I don't want any of you all out there to hate on Box Hall for getting the Titanic's coordinates slightly off. Now, jumping back to the Carpathia here. While the Carpathia was steaming towards where it thought the Titanic was, basically what ended up happening was, by sheer chance, this error in navigation would actually end up fixing itself. But I'll talk more about that in a minute. For now, what I want you all to think about is the Carpathia currently steaming towards the Titanic's position with all possible speed. While the Carpathia was steaming towards the Titanic's position, Harold Cottom was still on the Carpathia's wireless system, listening to the Titanic's distress call. And he was also listening to the response of other ships that were also tuning in to the Titanic's distress call. Now, there's an incredible video out there called Titanic in Her Own Words, where it takes the dots and dashes of Morse code that the Titanic was sending out on the night of the sinking and puts English text on them. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to play a short audio clip from that video just so you all get a taste to what Harold Cotton was hearing through the Carpathia's radio as the Carpathia was steaming towards the Titanic. CQD, CQD, Baltic to Titanic, SOS, Baltic to Titanic, SOS, SOS, this is Titanic, this is Olympic, this is Titanic, this is Virginian, SOS, calling Titanic, CQD, this is Virginian, CQD, calling Titanic, this is Titanic, Cape Race to Virginia, SOS, report to your captain, SOS, the Titanic has struck iceberg and requires immediate assistance, received, Olympic to Titanic, CQD, SOS, Olympic to Titanic, this is Titanic, Carpathia to Titanic, we have struck an iceberg, and are sinking, we are coming your way, SOS, coming at full speed, CQD, doing 15 knots, received. So Stop yeah, as you can plainly see, it was a very chaotic night that night, listening to the Titanic's distress call through the Carpathia's radio system, as well as listening to the responses of other ships, all also trying to contact the Titanic. And what you all also need to remember is, we have the benefit of hearing all of this through English text. Back then, in 1912, the only thing that they had to go on were dots and dashes of Morse code. So, I can imagine it would start to get very confusing listening to all these different dots and dashes from other ships all trying to radio in to the Titanic. Remember, they didn't have different radio frequencies at the time. So, everybody who was hearing this could chime in anytime they wanted and try to talk to the Titanic, and the Titanic would try to talk to them. So wireless messages that night were getting to be very chaotic and very hard to understand. Believe it or not, it got so bad at one point that the RMS Olympic, the Titanic sister ship, radioed all other ships to stop talking so it could talk to the Titanic in order for it to get a better feel into what the situation was with the Titanic. 
but all of you who have watched my Olympic series have definitely learned all about that by now. If you would like to watch that series, I will include a link to that in the description below. Now, as Harold Cottom continued to monitor the situation with the Titanic over the Carpathia's radio, as more and more time went by, he began to notice something odd going on with the Titanic's distress call message. He noticed that the signal coming from the Titanic was getting weaker and weaker as time went by. In fact, it got so weak at one point that ships that were further away from the Titanic than the Carpathia was began asking the Carpathia if they could still hear the Titanic, and the Carpathia said, yes, I can still hear her. You see, what was going on was, the way wireless technology worked in 1912 was, the more power a ship had, the more power it could put into its radio, thus that means that the signal from that ship could go further. So, as the sinking of the Titanic continued to play out, the Titanic's power got weaker and weaker, so the range at which the Titanic could transmit a distress call got weaker and weaker. This is why ships that were further away from the Carpathia could no longer hear the Titanic, but the Carpathia could. And then, at 1.57 a.m., the Carpathia picked up its very last distress call from the Titanic. After this, the Carpathia could not hear any messages from the Titanic any longer, and neither could any other vessel. Now, there are some reports out there that state that after this last transmission was sent from the Titanic at 1.57 a.m., there may have been a few other messages sent from the Titanic. However, the messages were so badly garbled that no ships could make out what these messages said. Heck, they couldn't even be certain that these messages came from the Titanic. Then, not long after this, Jack Phillips and Harold Brad, the Titanic's radio operators, left the Marconi room and tried to make their escape from the Titanic since the final plunge was beginning at this point. At 2.17 a.m., the Titanic's stern climbed high into the air, and then the Titanic broke in half. And then, at 2.20 a.m., the Titanic slowly slipped beneath the surface, taking with her 1,496 people that were still clinging to the Titanic, casting them into the freezing cold North Atlantic Sea. Now, it's important to note that Jack Phillips and Harold Brad, the Titanic's radio operators, did not have a chance to tell any other vessels that they were getting ready to abandon the Marconi room on the Titanic. Because of this, that meant that when the Titanic stopped transmitting, all other ships just had to basically guess as to the status of Titanic. Once the Titanic went silent, all the other ships in the air began asking other ships if they had any news from Titanic, at which point no other ship said they knew anything. One ship even said that we haven't heard from Titanic for about 30 minutes. So as far as Harold Cottom and Captain Rostron on the Carpathia were concerned, this meant that they needed to accelerate the Carpathia and get as much speed out of the ship as possible in order to reach the Titanic's location as quickly as possible because they were beginning to fear that the unthinkable had just occurred. All right, everybody. Well, hey, I hate to do this, but I think this is a good place to pause the Carpathia timeline series for now. So be sure you tune in next time to the last episode on the story of the RMS Carpathia. I know I said that I thought I could get everything about the Carpathia into a two-part series, but upon doing some research into it, there's enough information in here for another episode. So I'm going to finish it off with one more episode, so just stand by for that. All right, everybody. Well, hey. Oh, and before I go, I did want to say all those points that I made in this video where I said that I would clarify it a little bit later on. Well, that's going to happen in the next episode. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure you leave a like. Be sure to subscribe. And hey, thank you all for doing everything you do. You all are awesome. All right, everybody. Well, hey, you all stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night, everybody. Special thanks to our Captain Level Patreon supporters, Olivia Julius, Canadian, Greg Gallick, and Callum Whaley. Thank you all so much for all the support.